Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my presentation about stoichiometry. Now, before you watch this video, make sure that you're confident on the basics of the mole concept, um, on how to balance chemical equations, on reacting masses, uh, and on limiting reactant calculations. Now, in this video, we're going to quickly explore what we mean by stoichiometry, and then we'll just spend the rest of it working through lots of worked examples. Okay, so stoichiometry. What is stoichiometry? The stoichiometry of a reaction is the ratio of each of the substances in the balanced equation. So in simple terms, it is the big numbers in our balanced equation. So for example, if we look at this reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to make uh, water, the big two in front of the H2 and the big two in front of the H2O, that is the stoichiometry telling us that we need two hydrogens, one oxygen and two uh, we make two waters. So we've got this two to one to two ratio. That is the stoichiometry of this uh, equation. Uh, a second example, we might have this one where we've got two iron oxides reacting with three carbons to make three carbon dioxides and four ions. Again, this time our stoichiometry is a two to three to three to four ratio. And we can see that because of the big numbers in front of each of the substances there. So the stoichiometry it's just the big numbers in the balanced equation representing the ratio of each of the substances in that equation. Now, to determine the stoichiometry, we can do ratio maths that is similar to that which we use for determining empirical formulas. So let's look at our first worked example of a stoichiometry problem. In this question, we're told that 25.5 grams of copper reacts with 3.2 grams of oxygen. And the question is asking which of the two possible reactions below occurred. So is it equation number one, where four coppers react with 1O2 to make two Cu2Os? Or is it the second equation, where two coppers react with one oxygen to make two CuOs? So the real question is, are we making Cu2O or just CuO? Now, as I said on the previous slide, we're going to want to use maths similar to the kind of ratio maths that we did for working out an empirical formula because ultimately we're trying to find out is our copper and oxygen in a four to one ratio in which case it will be the first equation or is it in a two to one ratio in which case it'll be the second equation so let's let's try and work out that ratio now we're going to be wanting ratios in terms of moles so we need to find the number of moles of each substance so let's try that first so if we've got copper here um, and uh, oxygen over here so a number of moles of copper, you should be familiar now with moles being mass divided by the relative formula mass. So in this case, we've got uh, 23.5 uh, is my mass for the copper. And the relative formula mass, or the atomic mass, they're the same in this case, um, for copper is given in the question, 63.5. If I do 25.5 divided by 63.5, I come out with an answer of 0 0.4 moles of copper. If I do the same thing for the oxygen, so the number of moles of O equals M over MR, which is the 3.2 grams in the question, divided by 32, which is given in the question as the MR for O2. Um, so divide that by uh, 32. And if I do that, I get an answer of 0 0.1 moles. Okay. So we've got this ratio now of 0.4 moles to 0.1. You can probably see the answer already, but let's just simplify that ratio formally. So to simplify a ratio, one of the easiest things, easiest things to do is to divide each part by the smallest answer. So in this case, we can do um, 0.1 divided by 0.1, and that simplifies this down to one part of O2. And we can do the 0.4 divided by 0.1, and that brings this down to four parts of copper. So we can see that we've got four coppers to one oxygen. Therefore, this first equation is the correct one because it's got that four to one ratio that we were talking about earlier. OK, so let's look at our second example. Now, this one's quite different to the previous one. And you'll notice that there's, there's no kind of set type of problem they might ask on stoichiometry. But if you keep in mind the sort of basic principle of ratio and finding things in terms of ratios of moles, you'll always be in, in a good place. So let's have a look at this. Um, it says use the masses used and the MR values for the reaction below 
to determine the stoichiometry of this reaction. So we've got A and B reacting together to make C, but we don't know how many A's, B's and C's there are. That's why we've got those question marks. But what we do have for each one is the mass of that substance that reacted or was produced and the MR for that substance. So if we find the number of moles of A, B and C and then simplify the ratio into whole numbers, that will give us our coefficients. So let's start by finding our number of moles. Now to find our number of moles, we're going to use our old friend, number of moles N equals mass M divided by relative formula mass MR. So let's, let's do that for each of A, B and C. So number of moles of A equals the mass, which was nine, divided by the MR, which was two. And that gives me 4.5 moles of A. The number of moles of B, same thing, M over MR. So my mass is 42 grams. My MR is 28. 42 divided by 28 gives me 1.5. And lastly, we'll look at our number of moles of C, um, M over MR again. My mass was 51 grams. My uh, MR, my relative formula mass was 17. 51 divided by 17 is 3. So we've got this ratio of 4.5 moles of A to 1.5 moles of B to 3 moles of C. So we need to simplify that ratio. And as I've said, a good way to do this is often to divide by the smallest answer. So the smallest answer in this case is 1.5. So if I divide 4.5 by 1.5, that gives me 3. If I do 1.5 divided by 1.5, that gives me 1. And lastly, if I do um, 3 divided by 1.5, that gives me 2. So now I know that in my balance equation, I've got 3 A's, 1 B and 2 C's. So my equation will look like this. 3 A plus B making 2 C's. And that is my final answer. Okay, so example three. Now, in this example, we have 22 grams of an unknown hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are compounds of hydrogen and carbon only, reacting with 80 grams of oxygen. And what we need to do is to determine whether or not the hydrocarbon is CH4, which is methane, or C3H8, which is propane, and determine the overall balanced equation for the reaction. Now, our approach here that we should take is work out what both of our potential balanced equations are first, and then we can calculate the mole ratios for the hydrocarbon and oxygen and see whether it matches the equation that we've worked out for CH4 or the equation that we've worked out for C3H8. So let's get our equations first of all. Now, if we start with CH4, it's reacting with oxygen, so we can say CH4 plus O2. Now, you might not know this yet, but once you've done the fuels unit, you will. When hydrocarbons react with oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide and water. So now we just need to balance that equation. So if we start with carbon, there's one carbon on the left, one on the right, so that is already balanced. Let's move along to hydrogen. There are four hydrogens on the left, and only two on the right. So if I put a big two in front of the water there, that means two times two gives us four hydrogens on the right to match the four on the left. And lastly, if we think about the oxygens, there are two on the left and one, two, three, four on the right. Um, so we need more on the left. So if I put a big two here, that will give us four oxygens left and right. And now that equation is balanced. The next one then, we've got propane. It's going to react in the same way because it's still a hydrocarbon. So we're going to have C3H8 reacting with O2 to produce carbon dioxide and water again, CO2 and H2O. And to balance that, well, let's start with carbons. We've got three on the left and only one on the right. So if I put a big three in front of my carbon dioxide, now that gives me three carbons left and right. Hydrogens, I've got eight on the left and only two on the right. So if I put a big four in front of that water, that gives me four lots of two hydrogens, which is eight in total. 
So I've got eight left and right as well now. So lastly, let's look at the oxygens. Now the oxygens, I've got two times three, which is six oxygens uh, from the carbon dioxide and four times one to give me another four from the, um, from the water. So that's 10 in total. So I need to put a five in front of my O2 there to give me 10 oxygens on the left as well. Now, the essence of this question is going to come down to looking at the ratio of our hydrocarbons to our oxygens. And if it is in a one to two ratio, then we know that the top equation is correct. And if it is in a one to five ratio, we know that equation number two is correct. So let's do that now. Let's calculate the mole ratios for the hydrocarbon and the oxygen, assuming um, uh, assuming each of our different hydrocarbons in turn. So in our first equation, we've got methane as our hydrocarbon and we've got oxygen. So let's find our mole ratio of methane to oxygen. Now remember moles, the number of moles is the mass divided by MR. So let's try that for methane. So the number of moles of methane is the mass, which is the 22 grams given in the equation, divided by its MR, which is the 16 given in the equation. And that gives me an answer of 1.375 moles of methane. Let's do the same with oxygen. So the number of moles of oxygen is mass over MR. Now we've got 80 grams in the question. So we've got 80 divided by its relative formula mass, MR, of 32. And that gives me a value of 2.5 moles of oxygen. OK, now you can probably see already that's not a nice pretty ratio. We've got a ratio of 1.375 to 2.5. I suppose that's close to a 1 to 2 ratio, but it's certainly not perfectly a 1 to 2 ratio. So we can be fairly confident already that equation number two is the right equation. But well, let's actually double check that by finding the ratio of propane to oxygen. So we'll do the same thing. We're looking at C3H8 to O2. Now, again, we're going to use our moles equals M over MR. So we're going to say the number of moles is the mass of propane, which again, is the 22 grams of our unknown hydrocarbon. So 22 divided by the MR for propane, which in this case is 44. And that gives me 0.5 moles of propane. And we've already seen from the previous um, bit of working that we've got 2.5 moles of oxygen. And if we simplify that ratio, if we divide both sides by 0.5, you can see that, that gives us a one to five ratio. Therefore, we can be confident in two things. We can be confident that in answer to the question, our unknown hydrocarbon is the C3H8. And we can be confident that this second equation is the correct balanced equation. OK, so let's look at example number four. So in this example, 10.8 um, grams of aluminium reacted with 42.6 grams of chlorine, Cl2, to produce 55.4 grams of AlClx, according to the reaction below. Deduce the stoichiometry of the reaction and the formula of AlClx. Now, I think the stoichiometry, we're, we're, we should be getting okay with that now, but what about this mysterious AlClx? Well, all this means is we know we've got, we know we've got a compound of aluminium and chlorine, we know that there is one aluminium, but we don't know how many chlorines there are. So is AlClx simply just AlCl? Is it AlCl2? Is it AlCl3? Is it AlCl4? And so on. You get the idea, right? Now, to be clear, you could, calc you could sort of work this out using the basics of ionic bonding and ionic formulas that we covered much earlier in chemistry. However, that's not really what this question is trying to assess. It's trying to look at this from a stoichiometric perspective. So let's have a look and see what that would be. Now, we can start by working out the um, stoichiometry of the left hand of the equation. And we can do that, as we've done on the previous slides, by working out some mole ratios. So let's look at the mole ratio of aluminium to chlorine. Okay, so 
our number of moles of aluminium, we're going to use M over MR again, our old friend. So the mass of aluminium in the question was 10.8 grams. Our MR for aluminium is 27. So we do 10.8 divided by 27, and that will give me 0.4 moles of aluminium. Do the same for our Cl2, and we'll get number of moles equals M over MR, which equals the 42.6 grams from the equation, divided by the MR, which is 71, and that will give us a value of 0 0.6 moles. Now, you may be able to see, you may not, that these, that if we do 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, that would be the same as a 4 to 6 ratio. And you can probably see that that simplifies to a 2 to 3 ratio. So therefore, our coefficients in the equation are going to be two aluminiums to three Cl2s. We can now also work out the coefficient for the uh, AlClx because we know each AlClx contains just a single aluminium. So there are, if there are two aluminiums on the left, just in terms of balancing, there must be two AlClxs. And now we're in a position where we can work out what the Al, what the X is in AlClx. So if we think about our chlorines, three times two means we've got six lots of chlorine. Okay. We're going to be splitting our chlorine equally between two AlClxs. So if I had one, two, three chlorines here, and one, two, three chlorines here, that would give me a total of the six chlorines I started with. And so therefore, I know that the X in AlClx must be a three. X equals three. And so my formula for AlClx is AlCl3 as my final answer for that. OK, example five. This is very similar to the previous one with the one slight change that we're not given the starting equation. So we're going to have to work that out as well, but it's easy using the information in the question. So let's have a look at this. It says 168 grams of iron, uh, Fe, reacts with 48 grams of oxygen, O2, to produce an oxide with the formula FeOx and no other products. Determine the value of X and the balanced equation for the reaction. So again, we're left with this um, mystery formula. We're asking, is it FeO? Is it FeO2? Is it FeO3? And so on. It's that value of X that we're trying to determine. We're not given the equation to start with, but we can produce it because it tells us that we've got iron is one of our reactants, Fe. O2 is another reactant, like that. And it tells us that we're producing this mystery FeOx, and it says no other products, so that there, there's our starting equation that we can begin to work with. So again, now we're going to look at our mole ratio. So what is the ratio of iron to oxygen? We can work that out using the values from the equation. So if I put that down here, Fe dot dot O2, um, the number of moles of Fe is going to be worked out using our old friend m over m r so we can say 168 is our mass of iron from the question divided by 56 which is our m r for iron given in the question and if i do that that comes to an answer of three moles of fe do the same for oxygen so the number of moles of oxygen is m over m r which is the 48 grams from the question, divided by its uh, MR, which is 32. And that gives me a value of 1.5 moles of O2. Now, if I divide, we, we, to, to kind of simplify this ratio, we can see 
that we got 1.5 of them. That's the smallest answer. So if I divide both of these by 1.5, 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. So I can see now that I've got these in a 2 to 1 ratio. So therefore, in my equation, I'm going to put a big 2 in front of the Fe. And I'm going to leave the, um, leave the oxygen blank because there's just one of them. So it doesn't need a number. So now I'm in a position where I can work out the formula of FeOx. So I know um, because there are two Fe's, I'm going to make two FeOx's. So I can put a big two in front of that. And to work out the formula of FeOx, well, if I've got two of them, I know that from the formula, and I've only got one O2, 1O2 contains two oxygens. Each of those oxygens must be going to one of the two FeOxs, and therefore there's just a single oxygen in the FeOx. So rather than saying FeOx, I can say two FeOs like that. And that is my final answer. Okay, so that's it, the end. And really hard calculations in this. So very well done if you got this far. And as always, thank you for listening.